Royalty only past this point. Peasants have to wait outside. This is not the place for you. You must go instead dig up filth and get some fine mud going in your buckets because today we're going to talk about the top five most expensive masterpieces. Video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to go over some expensive cards today. We're going to look at the top five masterpieces as far as value goes. But before we do, if you would, go down there and hit that like button. If you like the video by the end of it, hit that dislike button. If you don't, it's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. If you like Jake and Joel, head on over to Patreon and get involved on a deeper level. I'm not going to tell you about all the perks. So before we look at the top five cards, the thing you need to know is that there are a total of 54 masterpieces. The first 30 appeared in Kaladesh. 24 and they were came the out only in, good ones. <laughs> that's right. And 24 came out in the Aether Revolt. But yeah, we're going to talk about the top five. And spoiler alert, they all came out of Kaladesh. Let's get into the cards. Let's start off with a staple of expensive artifacts, Jake. A sword. Sword of Feast and Famine. Three mana for an artifact equipment. The creature gets plus two, plus two. Pro black, pro green. And when it deals combat damage, that player discards and you untap all lands your control. And for just a five mana investment, you can get this onto the battlefield and onto your creature. Yeah, a $250 card you're looking at here with Sword of Feast and Famine. And you can acquire the Mirrored and Besieged version for 58. We're going to get into that. Yeah. But essentially, with Sword of Feast and Famine, this is the only card that's going to appear on the list today that is not fast mana. You know, that's normally the big thing that people are looking for. And what I've noticed over the years is that people care more about the permanents that are on the battlefield than they do about their lands, right? Because the expeditions do not keep up with a lot of the masterpieces that we're talking about today. So this card came out in Mirrored and Besieged. That's right around the time that we started playing. I've known this card for a long time. We've all dealt with it. And yeah, it does make the top five here. And again, you can find a mirrored and besieged copy for around 58 bucks. Jake, let's go to the number four most expensive masterpiece and talk about Mox Opal. Yeah, and it would be way more expensive if it hadn't got hit with a ban in modern. Um, any of the cards like Sword or like Mox Opal until it did get hit with a ban have a much higher multiplier because there is desirability for those across multiple formats. And if you were playing Affinity in Modern or any decks that require four of Mox Opal, I think Cheerios ran it as well you would want you you know it's just going to drive the price that much more so there has been a correction on the price of this card you can find one for 45 dollars in modern masters 2015 that version again all the prices in this video you need to do your own due diligence you need to look through go to tcg player ebay other apps just make sure that you're searching the lowest price make sure you're checking conditions because the prices are subjective and certain people are moving cards for certain uh, different reasons. But yeah, $276 for the main, the the masterpiece version of Mox Opal. And again, you do not, none of these versions are required, but like there is something to be said about Pimp Factor, right, Joel? I mean, we're always like looking for like the coolest cards for our decks or like foil versions or time shifted frames. Fast mana is always going to be huge in EDH. These treatments are gorgeous. I, I do think, Jake, that these are the most beautiful treatments of some of these artifacts. Like you said, you can get one for about 40 or $50, but we're talking about variants today, y'all. And that variant is very expensive, just like this expensive variant of another EDH staple, Mana Vault for a mana. It's quick, man. You play it for one and it taps for three. That's it. You've got some downside, but who cares? If you're playing at the highest level of competition, this is what you're looking for. At this point, Jake, this card is only really played in Commander, right? Like restricted yeah. in legacy i believe and banned in anything else or not legal in anything else commander really is you know you said it a couple of them are restricted in uh, certain formats but otherwise banned in pretty much everything other than commander and that really does say something about that format and what that format is able to do to these old powerful uh staples and the most bling version of them but yeah these cards have withstood the test of time They've gone through a lot of ups and downs, and now we're starting to see them start to skyrocket as they are far out of print. Mana Vault is a card that's $401. Again, you're going to want to 
search around for it, you can find the fourth edition copy for 82. So make sure you look around for like the white border. The Ultimate Masters version has gone up to like a hundred bucks. It's really driving the price of that sealed product. But yeah, if you are looking for a Mana Vault, expect to pay uh, a pretty hefty price, whether you are getting the Masterpiece version or the bottom of the barrel pr version. This is one of those cards that needs a reprint in a big way. We're trying to provide the highest value version, which are gonna be these because they're so rare and the lowest value that you could find. So you get a good idea of where the range is on this card. Very expensive card, lots of reprints, but this is one that Wizards kind of pulls out of the hat whenever they need to sell a set. Just be like, oh, Mana Vault's in it. Mana Crypt's in it. Speaking of our very next card, just slap one of this <laughs> these fast mana artifacts that are really commander playable in a set and people are going to buy it because it's going to drive the price down to like 90 85 dollars for four weeks and then the price is going to slowly start creeping back up but jake these masterpiece versions like i said they're so rare that it's very unlikely that these prices ever go down unfortunately that's right and what you're looking at here mana crypt it's essentially it's a soul ring for zero but it has big downside you know you have to survive a coin flip but a lot of players they just don't care they run it anyway if you are trying to ramp stuff out this is fast mana it comes at a cost we just talked about mana vault you have to pay to untap it if you want to use it again or you have to figure out some way to untap it using some other permanent on the battlefield or some sort of spell so yeah, with uh, with a lot of these fast mana, it's really about rushing out all of your biggest spells, getting your win con as quickly as possible. Use your life as a resource. Don't covet your life. Just burn yourself down if it means winning the game. And Mana Crypt pretty much exemplifies that, right? MTG Stocks is going to tell you this card is around 450 to 500 bucks, but I'll tell you on TCG Player, the lowest you can find it for is 755, and that's for a light play copy 755 light play that's insane yeah and what's crazy about it is you know the regular mana crypt that was just reprinted in uh double masters is already creeping back up and mystery boosters and eternal masters what you're looking at here is the eternal masters mystery booster version these popped up a pretty good bit despite mystery boosters having a huge list of cards on the list 755 for the masterpiece and that's going to be light played if you're looking at near mint Man, it's like encroaching like a thousand bucks in some spots. So uh, yeah, 150 for Mana Crypt, and we are already looking for another reprint for this one. Yeah, for sure. Anytime any of these like high power EDH staples start getting up to the 100, 150, you know, that's when we start slapping them in videos that are like, we want these cards reprinted for a commander because they right. just are perpetually in need of reprints. Jake, how about a card that is perpetually reprinted, but the bling versions are going to be absolutely out of this world as far yeah. as price goes. It's Soul Ring. Do I need to explain this card to anybody, Jake? I don't I don't think we do. It's a card <laughs> with very little downside other than drawing uh, aggro from, from all of your opponents when you yeah. get it out early. It's essentially like three or four bucks. You know, it gets reprinted in every single Commander Precon. Yeah. You can probably find a Soul Ring for like a dollar two dollars if you if you really look around for it it is constantly reprinted because it is so important to the format uh no real reason to ban it you know a lot of people are like well you could ban it to make a little bit more variance but the masterpiece version is like minimum eight hundred dollars and that's for a, mi a, a moderately played copy and if you start looking around for a near mint version you're going to start seeing like 850 900 again this is another one of those cards that's encroaching on a thousand bucks but for people that don't have any limit to their bank account uh for players that are like you know what i have my one mtg deck uh it's my commander deck it's my baby once a year i add one big new blinging card to it i mean imagine taking all of your mtg expenses put it toward one card for the year you buy the soul ring for your deck i mean that's some people are going to do that so this yeah. is a uh, highly some people are going to be cassius covered. marsh where probably every soul ring in all of his commander decks <laughs> is this soul ring and that's fair and you know he might be out there playing foot playing football but we all know that he's thinking about mtg <laughs> as he's 
heading on into the end zone. Real quick side note, we made a music video about Soul Ring. It's a kind of a silly thing and it's way off brand for us, but it's in the cards right now. If you would go check it out and let us know what you think. If you're watching this in the future and the price is already over a thousand dollars for this card, please let us know in the comments. Those are the five most expensive masterpieces. Let's close the book. Ladies and gentlemen, click that like button if you like the video. Click that dislike button if you don't. I said it at the beginning. I'm saying it again at the end. We've talked about the top five most expensive masterpieces. Make sure that you're subscribed because we are going to cover the top five most expensive other stuff in MTG. We, uh... Yep, that's a We'd plan. love to have you.